I, I think that there's something here for all of us to think about, and that is that Wayne Gretzky is the greatest player that, that played the game. We know that. But how unusual is it for a game's greatest player to also be its greatest statesman, its greatest spokesman, its greatest ambassador? Yeah, really absolutely impeccable. There have been a, a couple of times where where he wasn't the Teflon man. There was a, you know, the, his, his exit from Los Angeles at times was a little tumultuous and, and that. But really, when you, on balance, look at the career that Wayne Gretzky had and how little controversy was really attached to it, especially in the, the era of the, the modern athlete, it's it's absolutely remarkable. And uh, uh, we've said it before, and, and, and I always remember Paul Coffey telling me this, right from the get-go in his first few years with the Edmonton Oilers and he says as great a hockey player as Wayne Gretzky is and he is the greatest he's an even better person and I and and then you spend any time at all with Walter Gretzky and you know where and, and Phyllis for that matter and 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 if you've ever been to their home in Brantford uh, I did a cover story of the hockey news many many years ago when Keith Gretzky was breaking in with the Brantford Alexanders as a 15 year old and went down to do the thing, and you get the pork chop dinner sitting down at the kitchen <laughs> table, and and it's uh, sitting down with the Gretzkys, and, and you're you, looking you around. You tucked into that and, pork and, chop, and, and pork chop say applesauce, and Phyllis is a hell of a cook. But, uh, all right. but, 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 but I'll tell you, they, uh, you know, this is a, a very genuine family, and uh, and you can see it in Wayne, and I'm sure you'll be able to see it in his kids as well. All right, guys, uh, that's Paul Romanek and Bob McKenzie live uh, at the Paramount Theater at Madison Square Garden. We'll go back to them for more reaction from some of Gretzky's teammates and others in a little while. When we come back, we'll be joined live by Mr. Hockey, Gordy Howe. Welcome back live to Gretzky, a celebration here on TSN. I'm Gord Miller. We'll be with you for a lot longer yet. We'll be taking you to Edmonton a little later on for a live news conference there as Glenn Sather and others respond to the news that Wayne Gretzky has retired after 20 brilliant seasons in the National Hockey League. We'll have a reaction from around the league. But our next guest is perhaps the one we want to hear from most. Joining us live from his home in Sarasota, Florida, Mr. Hockey, Gordy Howe. Gordy, uh, thank you for joining us. You had a moment, uh, you had time to watch uh, Wayne's retirement news conference. What did you think? Well, I, the kid handled himself in proper fashion. I, I'm very happy for him. He's, uh, he made up his mind to uh, give a game up that he loved so much. And, they, uh, and like he said, it's emotional, but he, that'll come when he unlaces the last pair of skates or, or when he's, uh, I say when his number's hung up again somewhere, he'll just absolutely uh, turn out to be a fountain because nobody's strong enough to take all that emotion in one swing but he's he's amazing young man he's uh, learned to adapt to a lot of things and one of them is now going to be his challenge to give up the game of hockey and he's made up his mind he said he's at peace with the world so i'm very proud of him gordy he talked to you uh, over the last month or so what did you tell him and, and, and why you you we heard you say earlier that you had hoped that he would make his decision in the summer yeah, that uh, I, I was hoping that way because a lot of times when I was feeling kind of down and out of it because we didn't make the playoffs and and the Red Wings hadn't done that great and my record wasn't that great and uh, I just thought, well, that's it's really melting out the fun of the game and maybe I should hang him up. But come around training camp again, that old feeling to compete and you know within yourself, uh, like they say, don't die with the music in you. I didn't want to do that, so I did decided that I'd give it another shot and uh, once a shot is being made it go, better go for all 80 games which exactly what happened in 90, when 1980 when 79 80 season I should say there is a um, an 84 schedule and I made all 84 games uh, you don't get hurt sitting on a bench a lot which <laughs> I did but but it was uh, it made me feel good I obtained what I wanted to I had 15 goals and I was a plus hockey player and that's all I wanted how honored are you by the fact that Wayne Gretzky has always said that you were his boyhood idol. He wears number nines because of you, and he has patterned his career after yours. Yeah, I wish I'd have been that good. <laughs> he, uh, the young guy, he, when they put down that 10 this, 10 that, 9 this, 3 that, holy mackerel. He had a, when he when it put down paper in front of you, it was a fantastic career. I knew it was great, but uh, numbers kind of proved that to, uh, to be true. And uh, to be mentioned in the same breath like Wayne uh, has always said he wanted his hair comb like that now he didn't realize I got that burned off a little bit but the uh, he uh, he was talking about hadn't uh, going to the um, 
the barber shop and wanting his hair cut in his style, which has amazed me. But he, uh, I just knew there was something there when uh, at 12 years of age I met him, shook his hand, gave him a trophy, and he was very adult-like and, and, and very wise for his age. And he, uh, he asked me a ton of questions at that particular evening. And I think where I, I won him as a friend was when um, they had him at the banquet and they handed the mic and that was mentioned that it would not happen. He didn't have to talk. So when the announcer automatically said Wayne Gretzky and handed him the, uh, the mic, I just got up and I saw the fear in his face. I gave the mirror back and I said, anybody who scores that many goals doesn't have to talk. So I think <laughs> I, I gained a friend. Gordy, uh, you saw him come into the World Hockey Association in 1978-79. One of right. the thrills of his career uh, was playing with you in the All-Star game that year. He was 160 pounds. He wasn't that great a skater, and they used to say his shot couldn't bend the twine. Uh, did you think back then this guy is going to light it up? Oh, yeah. His, uh, the, the brains, the hockey sense, or what do you want to call it, he was just fabulous. He, uh, and even as a young man, when playing with he and Mark, I could read Mark very well because I played with him for a year or so. But with Wayne, when he came down there, I, he'd take a little peek, and then he'd make a move to draw the defenseman his way and compute where you're going to be at that certain particular time and then lay the puck flat on your stick. So give you an opportunity to get a good shot away or maybe even a breakaway. So it's, uh, yeah, that, that doesn't come with a man only uh, 17, 18 years of age. That comes with a, a pro who's been around for four or five years. And here this guy come in fresh, fresh you new kid making plays of an old veteran. Yeah, you've got to believe there's something in, uh, that tickles your mind that this kid is going to be great. What uh, is his legacy to the game, do you think? Uh, I think uh, not only the ice duties, the success on the ice never went to his head. Uh, he mentioned it exactly how we felt as players that when he got himself into the dressing room, he is no, no bigger than anybody else and no bigger than the game, and he's just out there to compete. And, and like all others, if he uh, didn't come up to his anticipation, maybe a goal or assist or a dominant killing of penalties or whatever it may be, that uh, he didn't feel good about it. And I guess that theory I used to say if I give 100% of whatever I had that particular evening whether good or bad I could sleep well and a rested player plays better year you know game after game so I think Wayne uh, he was smart beyond his uh, years in the game of hockey and also as a human being. Gordy uh, you and he have something else in common among all the other things that you're the greatest players ever to play the game but you played for so long your entire adult life you played hockey. Wayne Gretzky mentioned in his news conference he's played hockey for 35 years. What was the toughest thing about walking away and what will you tell Wayne about making the, the adjustment from being a hockey player to an ex-hockey player? Well, he's already in business as we were. We, uh, I talked about Colleen and I, we never made enough money in here to, uh, to lay on our morals and get by on the hockey or we didn't get invested into too many things because the monies weren't there. So. What we had to do is work in the summer, and I, I think it made Colleen and I partners and very, very much uh, stronger person. And the, uh, so when uh, I told him, when if he had basically to make up his mind uh, that maybe he should wait till August, and then if he still has that feeling that he's he's through with the game, that'd be beautiful, and then he's doing the right thing. But he seemed so confident and so at, at ease with what his decision was being, and I saw Janet smiling. Nick, the kids were getting a little uh, restless there, but those are kids and very beautiful young children. And uh, his daughter stayed home; she didn't want to cry. <laughs> so, so you know the talk's been there. And I had the feeling when uh, he was talking about that the other day. He, he there's a little if it's one out of a million. It's it's uh, well, it's not decided right yet, you know. And some of the comments, but the uh, the camera used to flash over to Janet, and there's. There's definite signs on her face, a little drainage, because he realized that her husband was giving up something he truly loved. Gordy, uh, we really appreciate you talking to us. And, and think about this. He broke a lot of your records, but he'll never touch you for seasons in the NHL or games played. Oh, I appreciate that. That's, uh, and I said he's only one goal ahead of me. I might make a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> Gordy Howe, thank you so much. Good, thank you. That's Mr. Hockey, Gordy Howe, live from his home in Sarasota, Florida. There are many people who will feel the loss of Wayne Gretzky, uh, none more so than the people who run the National Hockey League. The commissioner of the league, Gary Bettman, is with Paul Romanek in New York.
Yeah, thanks, Gord. Uh, we just finished uh, listening to one legend, Gordie Howe, uh, uh, pondering a comeback. Uh, I'm sure Wayne Gretzky's probably not going to do that. Uh, from Based on your conversations with him, Gary, I mean, is this a decision that's that's firm and one, more importantly than that, that he's comfortable with? The It's been clear to me from the discussions that we've had during the week that it's firm, and he is at peace with it. it it's, it's a decision that he's obviously given a lot of thought to, that he feels good about, even, even if he can't articulate every reason that it's a good decision decision, but he's clearly at peace with it and comfortable with it, and, and that's the only good news about it from my standpoint. Uh, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't expect you to share the intimate details of a private conversation, but when, when you were chatting with him, was there ever a moment where you, where you sort of put the cards on the table and said, look, I mean, come on, please stick around, do a farewell tour, uh, play for a few more years? Well, as actually, I think Wayne said during uh, his press conference, we had actually had a conversation over lunch about a year ago over the possibility of a farewell tour, and I understood that that wasn't something that he really wanted to do, and I respected that. Uh, he's given too much to this game for anybody to be imposing demands or making him feel guilty about doing something. You know, in the course of the conversation uh, that we had, it was clear that, that he has a tremendous love for the game, uh, but he felt it was time. So what do we do uh, with our game and with number 99? Do we say nobody else can wear that? Is there a plan to maybe uh, retire it? I know that trial balloon has been floated by some people. Wayne has uh, given so much to the game. Today's about him announcing his retirement. Obviously, he's going to be honored in appropriate ways, and at the appropriate time, we'll be announcing those things. But uh, he will be honored. As, as commissioner, I mean, uh, you're, you're party to some great conversations with some of the greatest stars in this game. Uh, what's your sort of Gretzky memory going to be? Not one necessarily on the ice, but maybe meeting him for the first time or talking to the guy. There's, there's got to be something there. I, I always enjoyed spending time with him. We, When I first became commissioner and he was playing with the Kings, we had dinner one night after a game. I remember being there the night he scored 8.02. You know, I remember the Stanley Cup run against the Canadians. And, and even over the course of the last week when we would talk, and every time I'd see him, I kept saying, you know, you don't have to do this. <laughs> uh, but he did because he felt it was the right time to do it. Uh, we touched on this before, but, uh, I mean, th the thing that worries me as a hockey fan is who's going to be the next Gretzky? And I don't mean the next Gretzky in the ice. There never will be. But the next guy to be the ambassador for the sport because he's unparalleled. We, we've got a lot of great young stars. Solani, Career, Brodeur, Lindros. You know, the list goes on and on. But there won't be another Wayne Gretzky. And that's just life. It's as simple as that. You know, yeah, it is. But we have a great game. We've got great players. And as Wayne said, as Gordy told him, the game will go on. Gary, thanks a lot for your time again. Thank you. Gary Bettman, Commissioner of the NHL, and now lots of time to golf and have lunch with Wayne. Thanks again. <laughs> Gord? Thank you, Paul Romanek. Uh, we have a lot more reaction to come from New York about the Gretzky retirement. Uh, of course, the Edmonton story has yet to be told. The Oilers have a news conference scheduled for later on. And also coming up, this is Moe's Sports Bar in Edmonton, and we'll take you there live later for some reaction with young John Gallagher and some Edmonton fans a little later on as well. Our complete coverage of Wayne Gretzky's retirement. Gretzky, a celebration continues after this. Welcome back to Gretzky, a celebration here on TSN, a special edition of Molson Nats Hockey. We will have uh, a lot of reaction to come from National Hockey League players from around the league, from Gretzky's friends, teammates, you name it. One of the stories that will be told tonight is how the city of Edmonton reacts to Wayne Gretzky's retirement. Of course, he brought that city four Stanley Cups between 1984 and 1988. His trade to Los Angeles devastated that city. And now you wonder how fans there view his retirement, even though it has been 11 years since he played there. Our own John Gallagher is at Moe's Sports Bar in Edmonton. John, uh, what's the feeling there? Well, oh, you know, Gord, as was the theme on TSN all day today, we come here not to feel sorry or sad to, for Wayne Gretzky, but to celebrate him, to, uh, well, as Boyd said, to party, to look back at 21 years of the finest athlete's career of all time, to go, hey, typical eyes. We're here at Moe's, as you mentioned. Gord, I know it's a favorite bar of yours. Here with Billy. Billy, what do you think of Wayne's big announcement today, Billy? Oh, I think it was uh, great. I think his timing was perfect. Uh, he knows the end of the line is not too far away, and he wanted to get out before that line came, and I respect him for his decision. Absolutely. There were some tears and some jeers here. And uh, you boys, what did you think of Wayne today? Proud of him? Very proud. I mean, he's the epitome of hockey in Canada. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember sneaking out in the basement after my parents used to go to sleep at, back home in Toronto for the late game. <laughs> see, see Wayne in the playoffs back in the 80s. What was your favorite Wayne Gretzky moment, boys? 
Top shelf, Mike Vernon. Oh, in overtime. That's right. Shorthanded. Yeah. That was a beautiful day. How you doing? Good. That was a nice announcement today, huh? What'd you think? It was good. You know, it was uh, kind of emotional when they were uh, doing the doing the highlights and stuff like that of his uh, career goals and all that kind of stuff. So, but other than that, I think he had himself well and uh, he didn't break down. So that was pretty good. Yeah, like you know, like George Brett and Mike Schmidt was a blabbering idiot. He he handled himself pretty well. There you go. Oh, look at it. it's Wayne Gretzky right here. Wayne, you look like you gained a couple not, of pounds. Not really, no. <laughs> What you think about of your boy today? Ah, uh, proud of him. It was more of a shock in '88. This is not a surprise, but it's sad. But I'm still recovering from 1988, actually. Mm -hmm. It was that day on August 15th, 1988, when they traded him to the LA Kings for a book of lottery tickets and 15 million dollars. Uh, it was not at all the case today. People handle this very professionally. We'll get you guys in a bit. Thanks all for coming out to Moe's Bar and Grill. <laughs> Gord Miller, back to you, buddy. Thank you, John Gallagher. Uh, back in the late 1970s, there was a bar called the Sports Page in Edmonton, and the manager was a former minor pro player who met Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky uh, befriended the man who would go on to become his agent and one of his closest friends. That man, Mike Barnett, is with our Paul, Paul Romanuk live in New York. The Sports Page seems a long way away, doesn't it now? Yeah, it sure does, Paul. It's a uh, happy day for, for Wayne, and therefore should be a happy day for all of us. Now, where does the, uh, for your reflections on this, where does the, the, the agent guy sort of separate from the friend guy? Uh, where did you want to...